I did a video shortly after buying my Rode Video Mic NTG last year, and I called it a content creator's dream. And after owning it for almost a year now, it's still true. And after my last video about the Video Mic NTG and the new SC15 iOS cable, I've gotten a few questions about how to set the mic up to get the best results. In other YouTube videos, I've heard some owners complain about the mic being noisy, or having background hiss. In this video, I'll go over the settings I believe will give you the best audio quality from your video mic NTG that will help you take full advantage of all this mic has to offer, which is quite a bit. So let's get started. Probably the most important settings are on your camera's microphone settings. The built-in preamps on most consumer DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, well, they're just okay. And they often have their own noise floor when you begin to increase the gain to get a proper level, which is usually minus 12 to minus 7 dB. However, when using the Rode Video Mic NTG, you want to bypass the camera's preamp by setting your camera's gain level to just barely above zero. That's on a Canon camera. Now, it may vary slightly for a Sony and other cameras. Then you want to set your level by the microphone's stepless gain on the rear of the mic until you get the level you want. You also want to make sure that your mic settings on the camera are in manual mode. Disable any automatic gain control and disable any attenuator settings. Remember that the Rode Video Mic NTG is a super cardioid pattern microphone, meaning that it does a great job of picking up sound directly in front of the mic and rejects sounds to the rear and sides of the microphone. But it's most effective when your mouth is as close as possible to the microphone, and you'll get the best results indoors by taking the mic off camera and booming it overhead. Now outside, you just want to be aware of the distance between your mouth and the mic to get the best sound quality. Another point to remember is to take advantage of the mic's high-pass filters. Now indoors, you probably would want to use the 70 Hz filter to lessen any low-frequency noise like from an air conditioner or a computer fan. Outside, you probably would want to switch to the 150 Hz filter, especially if there's any wind noise. And you would also want to use the foam windscreen and a furry windscreen if you have one on windy days. Now once you've engaged that 150 Hz filter and using the windscreens on the mic, you might want to engage the high frequency boost to make up for any lost high frequency sounds. And you can do so by long pressing the top button until the LED lights up. If you find yourself in an extremely noisy environment, engage the minus 20 dB pad by pressing the second button to reduce the sensitivity by 20 dB. And if you are unsure about your level settings, you may want to engage the safety track. What this will do is record the level that you set on the left stereo channel and the same recording 20 decibels lower on the right hand channel. Then if any or all of the audio is clipping or distorted, you can use the backup to save the day. I've also noticed that some users wonder about the lifetime of the lithium ion battery. First, make sure that you are buying or you bought your mic from an authorized Rode dealer. Then register it with Rode to get an extended 10-year warranty. Rode states that if the battery fails within the 10-year period, contact them and they will, quote, happily help out. That's their words. Other reviews I've seen on YouTube state that there is no battery charge indicator. However, that's just not true. When you turn on the mic, a green light indicates it's fully charged. An amber light means it's medium charged, and the red light means it has a low charge. If the red light is flashing, it means very low charge. Rose states that the battery life should be 30 hours before it needs to be recharged. One issue that I've had with the automatic on-off feature of the mic is that sometimes the mic was not coming on when I pressed record, and I would get a take with no audio. Needless to say, that's a little bit frustrating. Now I just turn on the mic before plugging it in and it bypasses the auto feature. I just have to remember to turn it off when I'm done and I'm very careful to do so now that I've run the battery down completely a couple of times. If you have any questions or comments about the Rode Video Mic NTG, leave them below in the comments section and I'll be happy to answer them. If you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.